Welcome to County Connection. I'm Tammy Fields, Director of the Palm Beach County Youth Services Department. May is Mental Health Awareness and Trauma-Informed Care Month. It also marks the kickoff of the county's Get Your Green On campaign. Today, we're going to be um, talking to several guests about Get Your Green On. Joining me now to talk about the campaign is Lauren Zuckman, Executive Director of Be Well PBC. Welcome, Lauren. Hi, Tammy, thanks for having me. We're all wearing green today and celebrating the Get Your Green On month. Can you tell us what, how Get Your Green On got started? Absolutely, so we are this year celebrating the seventh annual campaign. So seven years ago, um, when I was working with Healthier Delray Beach at the time, um, we had a group called Teen Life and HDB at Atlanta Community High School. And the students there wanted to do something in honor of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And we talked about how green is the national color for mental health. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, something easy to get the whole student body involved in is get everyone to wear green. And then talk about why are we wearing green? And so that easy idea that came about just like that with a group of about um, seven students launched the Get Your Green campaign. And from there, we got involved with Birth to 22 the following year and from years since, where we have partnered to take what started in Delray Beach all the way across the county. And now it's starting to seep into other counties and across the state. It's amazing how it's grown. Um, is there a theme this year for the Get Your Green On campaign? There is. So, you know, in light of, you know, the challenges that we have all faced in the last two years and, and of course, challenges even before the last two years, um, we really thought about community healing and the resiliency of our community. And so that's the theme for this year is we start to step out of our doors again, go back to work, figure out what's next. How can we do that together? How can we heal and do what we do as a community best, which is bounce back and, and survive and move on and thrive, which is most important. Res resiliency is so important. What activities are planned this year for Get Your Green On? There are a lot of great activities happening all month long in May. Um, even at the end of April, because there's so much going on, we had to have the kickoff at the end to get ready for the next month. So there's a big kickoff virtual event that people can join. And then throughout the month of May, there are trauma trainings. There are um, mental health first aid trainings. There is a um, mental health walk associated with the Clematis at night. The Young Singers of the Palm Beaches are gonna do a concert in honor of their mental health awareness. Um, there are so many other wonderful activities that if someone goes to the Birth to 22 site, get your green on page, or go to getyourgreenon.org, they can see a calendar and it will highlight all the wonderful things that our providers, our schools, local businesses are doing throughout the month. It sounds like everybody has an opportunity to, to get involved. Absolutely. Lauren, we've talked about May is Get Your Green On Month, but I understand there's a special day in May with extra celebrations. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So the third Thursday of the month of May is always the Get Your Green On Day. And that's the day where we encourage anybody and everybody wear green, post pictures of themselves using hashtags Get Your Green On and GYGO and the year. So. GYGO 2022, GYGO 2023. Make sure you use those hashtags, post pictures all over social media, and then go to the Get Your Green On Facebook or Instagram pages, and you can see all the fun pictures that are being shared out. Thank you. I remember doing Get Your Green On one year, and I was standing by the Leaning Tower of Pisa, ah, I and I sent that. you a picture for it. That was awesome. And you're with Be Well PBC. Can you tell me a little bit more about Be Well PBC? Sure, so Be Well PBC is a Palm Beach County-wide behavioral health and wellness initiative. We are here to really try to do better for our youth, our families, uh, adults across Palm Beach County to ensure that we are um, really paying attention to everyone's behavioral health and wellness and helping them on their journey to their you know, greatest potential of health. So we focus on things like aligning services and systems with community to make sure the community is getting the services they need. We work with residents side by side to listen to what ideas they have and elevate their ideas for solutions. 
And we also are really focused on the behavioral health workforce. How do we support the workforce to be well so they can support others to be well? Mm -hmm. And also how we can make sure we have a diverse and growing workforce because we know that there is a growing need. We have to have the professionals to meet the need. It sounds like great work. Thank you so much, Lauren, for joining us. And we'll be right back with County Connection. Get excited and join us on May 19th in support of mental health and Get Your Green On Day. Get Your Green On is so important because we need to take care of our own mental health, our physical health, how they come together. So honor yours by wearing green, posting pictures, and doing something good for you. Get Your Green On Month is so important because we need to honor our mental health. Welcome back to County Connection. I'm Tammy Fields, Director of the Palm Beach County Youth Services Department. Our next guest today is Renee Lehman, CEO of the Center for Child Counseling. Welcome, Renee. Thanks so much for having me, Tammy. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about the Center for Child Counseling? Absolutely. Our mission is building the foundation for playful, healthful, hopeful living for children, families, and communities. So what does that mean? Um, since 1999, when we were founded, um, we have been tackling childhood adversity and trauma. We integrate into communities throughout Palm Beach County in child care centers and schools and other organizations really to mitigate the impact of early adversity and trauma for children, teens and families. Since 1999, we've expanded. We now have nine clinical programs and we serve over 5,000 children a year. You mentioned trauma several times, and I know you've also mentioned um, ACEs. Can you tell us what those terms mean? Absolutely. ACEs, that means adverse childhood experiences. Um, so a study showed, and many studies after the original study in the 1990s, shows that what happens to you before the age of 18 actually impacts you throughout your lifespan adverse experiences and positive experiences. So ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, are potentially traumatic experiences. Um, it can include things like um, a parental mental illness, substance abuse, a divorce, loss of a parent. Trauma is really, it's very subjective and it's, um, it's really a threat to somebody's feelings of safety and security. ACEs can be traumatic, but ACEs are not always trauma. And so I think that's a really important distinction for people to know because we talk a lot about ACEs and trauma, but trauma really is that um, threat to safety and it could be repeated ACEs in the absence of buffering relationships, that could be trauma. So it's more than just kids get over it. Um, no, right. right, kids don't just get over it, they need those healthy positive relationships in their life to really um, work through what may have happened to them and to buffer even at the cellular level, um, those healthy relationships can change the physical health um, related to the trauma. What kind of physical effects can um, children who've experienced ACEs have in adulthood? Well, the ACEs study and lots of research since then has shown that ACEs actually, they get under your skin. It can change the way your DNA is read and transcribed. It can go through generations and it's actually related to 10 of the leading causes of illness in the United States of America. So everything from heart disease to diabetes has its roots in adverse childhood experiences. So if an, a, a child experiences a lot of trauma, is there hope for them? Is there a way that they can recover? Absolutely, there's always hope. So we talk a lot about positive childhood experiences or PCEs being the antidote to ACEs and trauma. Children aren't just naturally resilient. When we say, oh, children are resilient, they'll get over it, they won't remember. That's not true. And even um, the earlier or the younger the child is when the trauma happens, the more impact throughout their lifespan. So it's really essential to get in there early um, to have those positive buffering relationships. We're fortunate to have organizations like yours that, that get in early and intervene. Absolutely, pre-birth. Pre-birth. <laughs> uh, I've heard you say before that ACEs is a public health issue and, and trauma is a public health issue. What do you mean by that? Well, ACEs, they have health implications, right? And we all, on some, most people have ACEs. So most of the population, it's not only about certain zip codes or people living in poverty. We do know that certain communities experience an overabundance of adversity and trauma. And we also talk about adverse community environments. So you have those individual and family level ACEs, adverse community environments. And now with the pandemic, there's another level of 
trauma that our families are going through. So if you have healthier children and you deal with their ACEs early, we'll have healthier adults. Right, and, and we'll have healthier families and healthier communities. There's a reference to trauma-sensitive um, services or trauma-informed services. What is what do you mean by that? Well, at the core of that is what happened to you, right? Knowing what somebody's experience has been because we take that view and that lens throughout our lifetime. Um, so we do a lot of training around that, even for organizations like the Lord's Place or the school providers within the school district. Anyone that will basically listen to us, we talk about trauma-informed care or trauma-sensitive care. That's just changing our view of what people have gone through and how that's impacting what they're doing now. So instead of saying, what's wrong with you? Why can't you just sit in class and listen to the teacher? Well, that child may be sexually abused or living with domestic violence. So just for the, a teacher or a caregiver or somebody in the community to change the view of what that child may be going through, that's what trauma-informed care is all about. Taking away the blame and shame. Absolutely. Um, I'm so thankful that you were here today and able to explain a little bit more about this important issue and how uh, we can address the needs of our children. Thank you for having me, Tana. We'll be right back with County Connection. Get excited and join us on May 19th in support of Mental Health and Get Your Green On Day. Get Your Green On is so important because we need to take care of our own mental health. So honor yours by wearing green, posting pictures, and doing something good for you. Welcome back to County Connection. I'm Tammy Fields, Director of the Palm Beach County Youth Services Department. Joining me now is Dr. Michael Kane, Manager of the Behavioral and Mental Health Services of the Palm Beach County School District. Welcome, Dr. Kane. Thank you for having me, Tammy. School can be really stressful for kids. What steps is the school district taking um, in order to increase mental health awareness and reduce stigma? That's a great question. And, and this is something that the school district's really been investing a lot of time and conversation on a, this exact question. There are many departments within our school district and there are many professionals on school campuses that are discussing mental health awareness and talking about strategies to reduce stigma, mental health stigma. And, and as we think about that, I'll highlight a couple of them. And it really starts with this core message that we've really been talking about, which is, it's okay to be okay, it's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to ask for help. The people on our school campuses have been talking with our students about that. We've been talking about it with our staff, with our families, that it's okay to be okay and it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to ask for help. And, and that's really increasing this conversation around mental health awareness. For students, we've been talking about, or, or excuse me, increasing mental health awareness through mental health awareness education. We've implemented a Sweet 360 uh, lesson, uh, mental health awareness program that has lessons on it that address improving awareness, reducing stigma, coping strategies, how to ask for help. All of this is embedded in this curriculum that we're delivering to students grades six through 12. Great, that's wonderful. What trends are you seeing in the area of mental health um, at schools? So one of the things that we've been keeping an eye on in the school district for a few years is just uh, the, how uh, young people, youth and young adults are managing in their mental health. We noticed that there are some patterns of young people showing increased need for support. We're seeing students struggling with symptoms of anxiety, symptoms of depression, feelings of isolation, uh, overall concerns with their well-being, is, it, that's what we've been noticing with our young people on our campuses. When we think of some of our programming that we have in place through one of our initiatives, uh, the Co-located Mental Health Professional Initiative, we really see five top concerns come up you know, in real time for our students. They're, 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 they're experiencing anxiety. They're struggling with symptoms of depression. Uh, they're struggling with, with being successful on the school campus. This is what they're reporting to us. Uh, struggling with relationships or just exposure to trauma. The good news is, however, that with the support uh, through our, from our community, we've had more mental health professionals on campuses now than we've had 
ever before. That's wonderful that the students have access. Now let me ask you, I can't imagine it's really easy to be a teacher on campus these days and, and there's a lot of stress there. Are there resources available for teachers too? You know, that, that's a great question and I'm glad you asked it because we do have a very robust employee wellness program within our school district. And, and again, when I talk about different departments, we have an employee wellness coordinator, Carly Fabricant, that does an amazing job with her team and, and sharing out wellness resources all year around for all of our staff. It could be scheduled activities, sharing of resources, uh, you know, virtual awareness programs. And then also we have our, our employee wellness health advocate program. It's called Employee Wellness Work Life, which is available to all of our district staff. Their spouse, their child, the parent of their spouse has access to a licensed clinician for six free sessions on any given topic. I've used this service myself. I've found it to be very helpful for me and my family. And I would encourage any district staff member, if you have a concern, to go to our district website and look for the Employee Wellness tab or to send an email to staffwellness at palmbeachschools.org. That's great that those resources are available and, and it's not just teachers is what I'm hearing from you. It's also the bus drivers, the people who work in the cafeteria. It's available to everyone. Any district employee and members of their family. So if a parent of a student in the district is starting to observe that something might not be right with their, mm -hmm. for their child, how do they go about asking for help? So we would encourage any parent, if you have a concern, don't keep it inside, go to the school, talk to one of our school-based mental health professionals. You know, on our school campuses, we have school behavioral health professionals every campus. On our school campuses, we have school counselors every school campus. On a hundred of our school campuses, we have co-located mental health professionals, clinicians to provide ongoing individual counseling at no cost to families. And in addition to that, we have 130 school psychologists available across the district. So if a parent has a concern, we would encourage that, that parent to, to go to their school and ask to speak with one of those persons. We have a, a really solid network uh, of services available to students that have really been expanded student access. The district is really committed to doing that. So I would encourage folks, go to your school, start there. Thank you, that's great. And just to, to follow up, what, it's Get Your Green On yeah. Month. What is the school district doing to celebrate Get Your Green On Month in May? Yeah, we're all excited for May. You know, we have a team that's been working to develop resources that would be appropriate for sharing with students, families, community members, staff, and we'll be launching these resources out uh, throughout the entire month of May so that each of those groups could log in, attend some sessions virtually, learn some things, watch some videos, and engage in some self-care activities. Of course, we're going to be wearing green, and we're excited for Get Your Green On. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Kane, for joining me today. My pleasure. And we'll be right back with County Connection. Join us on May 19th for the Get Your Green On Day, the day where everybody wears green for their own mental health and posts pictures of themselves using hashtags GYGO2022 or hashtag Get Your Green On. We need to take care of our own mental health, so honor yours by wearing green, posting pictures, and doing something good for you. Welcome back to County Connection. I'm Tammy Fields, Director of the Palm Beach County Youth Services Department. Joining me now is Kenya Madison, Senior Director of Healthier Delray Beach. Welcome, Kenya. Thank you for having me. So what is Healthier Delray Beach and what is its focus? Healthier Delray Beach is a resident-led, resident-driven community initiative um, focused on the behavioral health of the most vulnerable population of Delray Beach community. I love that it's resident-led and resident-focused. I think that's very important. So how do your community members um, get involved in Healthier Delray Beach? Great question. Um, many of our Resident leaders get involved through our um, workspaces. So we have community engagement spaces where we're out in the community, build our blocks, um, engaging with residents as neighbors. We also have organizational partners where we partner with nonprofit organizations that are serving the community. The city of Delray Beach has been a partner. 
Um, we work in collaboration with the other Healthier Together communities, Be Well, PB, PBC, the county. Um, we have lots of partners. So if you think of us, we're more of a network um, and we're serving residents, we're residents serving residents. That's great. Yes. Now, all of the Healthier Together communities have a, an area of focus mm -hmm. that has been chosen by the community. What is Healthier Delray Beach's area of focus? Our area of focus um, is behavioral health with a very heavy emphasis on mental health and emotional well-being. Um, but understanding that the full spectrum of behavioral health covers all ways of life from housing to economic stability to your physical health as well as your emotional well-being. So we look at the whole person. We look at the connection between the brain, the body, and behavior. What types of things do your residents say they need in order to maintain good mental health? Right now, residents are saying that they need access to quality providers. They want to make sure that their providers are understanding their lived experiences that shape who they are and shape their life so that when they're approaching services, whether they be community-based services or clinical services, they want to make sure that they're going to meet someone who understands them as a person. How is Healthier Delray Beach going to be celebrating Get Your Green On this year? Um, being the birthplace of the Get Your Green On campaign, we are celebrating this year in the same fashion that we've done since the beginning, which is starting with youth getting youth voices. Um, Delray Beach is planning an activity in June that we're going to have youth participate in as panelists, as facilitators. And so this May, we're focusing on getting youth together to lend their voices to um, just taking a break to assess how everyone is doing, you know, asking that question. Wonderful, wonderful. So Palm Beach County won the Culture of Health Prize from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wanted to ask you the, this question because I know you were an integral part. Can you tell us more about the prize and um, the role that Healthier Delray Beach played? The thing that I love most about winning that prize is it validates the work that we do together not just in Delray Beach, but across the county, how we are united um, to bring better solutions, bigger solutions, more impactful solutions to our residents. And so it meant everything to me because it meant that someone heard the residents' voices that we've been bringing to the table and that we've carved out a space to continue to be heard over the years. Sounds like relationship building <laughs> and collaboration is the key. Mm -hmm. Kenya, thank you so much for being here and, and um, being the community voice for Get Your Green On. We'll be right back with County Connection. Get excited and join us on May 19th in support of Mental Health and Get Your Green On Day. Get Your Green On is so important because we need to take care of our own mental health. So honor yours by wearing green, posting pictures, and doing something good for you. Welcome back to County Connection. I'm Tammy Field director of the Palm Beach County Youth Services Department. And joining me now is one of my colleagues, Twyla Taylor from the Residential Treatment and Family Counseling Division of the Youth Services Department. Welcome, Dr. Taylor. Thank you, Tammy. So Youth Services offers a wide variety of mental health services, both um, inpatient and um, outpatient. Can you explain the difference between inpatient and outpatient services? Sure. So with outpatient services, it's more of the child and the family coming to an office location for one hour a week. We offer those services for three to, up to three to four months. And for residential, it, we have our High Ridge Family Center located in West Palm Beach, and a child would stay in the facility Monday through Friday and go home on the weekends. And th their length of stay could also be up to three to four months. And all of these services are free, correct? Yes, free. That's, that's a great service. And you also offer services in the schools, correct? Yes, yes we do. Uh, we offer some school-based services based on therapist availability through our youth and family counseling program and um, also offer so additional outpatient services through our education and training center. Wonderful. 
So how would um, someone qualify for any of the services that are offered? So the nice thing is that these services are open for any Palm Beach County resident. The way we determine whether someone is eligible for outpatient services or residential is through an intake interview. So they simply need to call 625-2540 and the receptionist can handle scheduling for any service that they, they want. And for more information, you can visit our website at pbcgov.com forward slash youth services forward slash counseling or scan the QR code on the screen. So we're here um, filming today at the High Ridge Family Center, at, which is the residential program you mentioned. And it is certified in the sanctuary model of trauma-informed care. Can you tell us what that means? So there are two fundamental beliefs in trauma-informed care. The first is that we all experience adversity. Adversity is universal. And the second is that we can heal from that adversity and potential trauma through um, coping skills and the development of uh, resiliency. And resiliency, as we've mentioned, is that ability to bounce back and recover. And we build resiliency through fostering healthy, supportive relationships with adults in our lives. So the children um, interact with the staff here as well as uh, with, with their families become part of the program as well, correct? Yes, yes. The kids stay in the program from Monday through Friday and they go home on the weekends and practice with their families so they're not totally removed from their families. The other really nice component that we have is we have a collaboration with the Palm Beach County School District. So when the youth are in the program, they're able to go to school on campus and their grades are transferred in and they're transferred out when they leave and then after the school day they are involved and immersed in a variety of trauma-informed programming that includes individual and family therapy and a multitude of groups throughout the weeks and those groups focus on um, increasing their communication skills, their coping skills, uh, the conflict resolution skills. We have a cooking class with our cafeteria here and uh, through collaboration with the Norton Museum of Art we also are able to offer an art class. That sounds wonderful and a lot of resources for, for young people. How is the Youth Services Department celebrating Get Your Green on Month. <laughs> we are doing a lot. So our High Ridge youth made this amazing Get Your Green On banner, um, complete with hand prints and inspirational messages and can't forget the sparkles. <laughs> Uh, and of course, uh, we are all on Get Your Green On Day, we're all going to be wearing green throughout the department, taking lots of pictures and posting them. In addition, our education and training psychology staff are presenting four lunch and learns for Palm Beach County employees on a variety of mental health topics, including depression and anxiety. And we also will be offering four continuing education seminars throughout the month of May for mental health professionals on a variety of issues such as uh, assessment, treatment, and advocacy. The youth in the program will be um, learning all about mental health and wellness uh, throughout the month. And we even offer parent education for our families that are involved in the program. I, I love the approach from the children and, and the family and the resources for employees. Thank you, Dr. Taylor, for joining me today. And thank you to all of our guests. To learn more about the Get Your Green On campaign, go to PBC Birth to 22, that's the number 22.com slash GYGO. I'm Tammy Fields. And we'll see you next time on County Connection.